Welcome to my lecture online. Next, we have an interesting pendulum problem to challenge us. So what we have here is we have a pendulum that starts out in this position at an angle of 60 degrees away from the vertical. The length of the pendulum is two feet, or actually make it two meters, that might be better. We'll make it a metric problem. So the length is two meters. And we're going to allow the pendulum to swing to the bottom. So four things we're looking for. First of all, what is the maximum acceleration of the pendulum? So we're going to start out initially with take initial position where we're going to have the maximum acceleration right there. Then we're going to calculate the maximum velocity which is reached when the pendulum reaches the lowest point in its path. Next, we're going to find the height of the pendulum when the velocity at the moment is half of the maximum velocity. And finally, we want to know the angle that the pendulum makes with the vertical when the velocities have the maximum velocity. So lots of good things for us to look for. First of all, let's find the maximum acceleration. To do that, we take it at its initial position. Notice we have mg pointing straight down. We have two components. We have a component which is along the length of the string. So this way, notice that this is the angle theta. And so therefore, this component would be mg times the cosine of theta, because it's adjacent to the angle. And then we have this component right here, which is the same as this component right here. And of course, I'm a little out of whack here, but this here is the mg sine theta component. Because you can see that this angle here is the same angle as a 60 degree angle. So theta here is 60 degrees, as a matter of fact, I'm going to replace that by a 60 degree angle so we don't confuse it with the theta that we're looking for over here. That's a different angle. And so the adjacent side is mg cosine theta. The opposite side here is mg sine theta. And hmm, which component is accelerating the pendulum? It would have to be the mg sine theta. The mg cosine theta provides the tension in the string, but the mg sine theta is what provides the acceleration. So therefore, we can say that maximum acceleration at this moment, A max, is going to be equal to, well, hmm, better way to, it's better to start with the general equation. Let's start with Newton's second law. All right, we can say that F max is equal to M times A max. So let's start with that. So therefore, A max, is equal to F max divided by M. And the maximum force is provided when we have the largest angle theta. Of course, when theta becomes 90 degrees, then the acceleration is caused by the weight, the free fall weight of the, of the pendulum. But in this case, it's going to be equal to Mg times the sine of 60 degrees, all divided by the mass. Notice the masses cancel out, and it's going to be a fraction of g, and of course the sine of 60 degrees is 0 0.866, so it's going to be 0 0.866, or 0. Point, yeah, 0 0.866, there's a decimal point right there, times acceleration to the gravity. So 86.6% acceleration to gravity is your maximum acceleration when the angle is 60 degrees. Next, we're going to find Vmax. And so basically what we have there is that the potential energy initial when it's at this height right here, is going to be equal to the kinetic energy final. Now, how high is the original height? To do that, we can realize that the original height here is equal to this portion right here of the pendulum. And what we need to find first is we need to find L at the top. So notice we have this triangle. Let me go ahead and use a green color to indicate this triangle. So we're going to use this triangle right here. Notice the hypotenuse is the length of the pendulum, which is two meters. So what we want is we find, we want to find the adjacent side. And we can do that by using the cosine, because the adjacent side there is, of course, associated with the cosine. So we can say that the, that the, the L top right here, L top, is equal to the hypotenuse, which is L, times the cosine of 60 degrees. Of course, the cosine of 60 degrees, that is equal to 1 half. So this is equal to 1 half times the length of the pendulum. Since the pendulum is 2 meters, L at the top is equal to 1 meter. 
And of course, that means that L at the bottom is equal to one meter, which means that the initial height is also equal to one meter. And so now we're able to go ahead and calculate this. The potential energy initial, which is MGH initial, is going to be equal to kinetic energy final, which is one half MV final squared. Notice the M's cancel out, and this tells us that V final is equal to the square root of 2GH. And at this time, that H is 1 meter, so we can say that this is equal to the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 1, which is the square root of 19.6. 19.6, take the square root, that gives us 4.427 or 4.43 meters per second. So this is equal to the final velocity when the pendulum gets to the very bottom of that swing. Now we're going to try to find out the height of the pendulum when that final velocity is half V max, half the V final right here. All right, how do we do that? Well, we use the energy equation again. So any work put into the system plus any initial potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy is equal to potential energy final plus kinetic energy final, plus energy lost due to friction. Now in this case, with the pendulum, there's no friction, so there's no energy lost, there's no work put in. The original potential energy is going to be MGH initial, plus zero kinetic energy and zero work put in. Potential energy final, that's going to be equal to MGH, well, H final? Yeah, let's call this H final right here. Let's call this H final. And yes, we are looking for what that is equal to. So H final plus kinetic energy, which is going to be one half M V final divided by two squared. Now we have the V final right here and V final can be expressed as two G H initial, right? That was the initial height where we started. Energy loss is zero. So now, what we can do is instead of putting the number in here, we're going to use this expression right here. That gives us MGH initial is equal to MGH final, which is what we're looking for, plus one half M and V final divided by two squared. That would be this quantity squared divided by two squared, which is four. So we have two GH initial, so it's this quantity squared as V squared divided by 2 squared, which is divided by 4. So that's qu this quantity right there. Okay, now what we can do is we get all the G's and we get all the H's. Uh, M's, I should say. <laughs> Not H's, but the M's. What do we have left? Let's see what we have left. We have H initial is equal to H final plus 1 half times two, that, would, that cancels out, so it would be one-fourth H initial. So now what we need to do is bring the one-fourth H initial over here. So we have H initial minus one-quarter H initial is equal to H final. And finishing up over here, we could then say that three-quarters H initial, three-quarters H initial is equal to H final. And I guess, that's the answer. H final is three quarters H initial. So let's go back to our drawing. For a moment there, I thought I had to kind of switch it around, but I don't need to do that. Notice H final is going to be equal to three quarters H initial, which is 0 0.75 meters, right? If H initial was one meter, three quarters of that is 0.7 meter, which is kind of interesting. The pendulum will have gained half its final velocity after it's dropped one quarter of its original height. And that's of course because the potential energy is a linear function of height, the kinetic energy is a quadratic function of velocity, so it needs the remaining three quarters of height to double its final velocity. So now we have the height when V is equal to half V max. So the next thing we need to do is find out what this angle is, so we need a second triangle. Now we're going to need this triangle right here, to find out what this angle is over here. So we have this triangle right here, this triangle right here. And notice we need this additional distance. So
So this from here to here is one meter. What's this additional distance? Well, that's one quarter of that. So that would be one quarter of a meter, which means that the two together would be five quarters of a meter. The length of the pendulum is two meters. So now we can find out the relationship here. We have the hypotenuse. We have the adjacent side. So by definition, we can say that the cosine of theta, what we're looking for, the angle when V is half V max, is going to be equal to the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. The adjacent side is 5 quarters of a meter, and the hypotenuse, the length of the pendulum, is 2 meters. So that means that the angle theta is equal to the inverse cosine of the ratio of, well, that can be written as 5 over 8. So what's the inverse cosine of 5 over 8? Let's find out. 5 divided by 8, and we take the inverse cosine. That gives an angle of 51.3 degrees. So finally, theta is equal to 51.3 degrees when, when the velocity at this location is half the maximum velocity. And now it looks like we found everything. We found the maximum acceleration. We found the maximum velocity. We found the final height, the height when V is half the maximum velocity. We found that it was 3 quarters of the original height, or in this case, 3 quarters of a meter. And finally, to find that angle at that moment, again, now we need to look at this triangle right here in blue. And that would be found by taking the hypotenuse. The adjacent side would be one meter plus a quarter meter, because three quarters is left. And then we put that in this equation to find the angle at that moment. And that is how that's done.